Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. How are you doing today? I'm Angela Wolf, and I'm May Flom. And we have a super fun show for you today. So May, welcome back. Happy New Year. Thank you. You too. How's it going? Fabulous. Fabulous. As good as it can be. <laughs> Very true. Very true. Well, I'm having a good time over here because I've been playing with new cut files and actually I haven't had much time. So I'm excited that today came up because it meant that I have time to play with them for a while. Oh, that's awesome. So you came up a lot over the holidays, by the way, because we were, especially last week, we were doing organizing. And one of the things that, well, first of all, I wanted to do this with watercolor, but everyone suggested I did not. I was labeling my bolts of fabric. And so I took just some cardstock that I had organized the way you showed me to do it in the little bins. And I just cut little round pieces with a hole through it. And then I just used the pen to write what the fabric was. So if it was like uh, 20 bolts of silk, I could just quickly do that, cut them out, and then I would tie them onto the fabric. So you could see why the watercolor wasn't going to be a good idea with the fabric. But it worked out great. It was so fast and customized. That's fantastic. Yeah, I've been cleaning. I've been cleaning a lot myself because it's just it's something about the new year. I always end up just kind of early spring cleaning and getting it all cleared out and organized. Absolutely. So for those of you that have never been here before, we are live on the Brother, we are Brother Brand Ambassadors, and we are live on the Brother Sews Facebook and YouTube pages for sewing and crafting. And today, we are definitely crafting. So say hi, say where you're from, you never know, your neighbor might be crafting next to you. <laughs> All right, so I see everybody's rolling in. I don't see any big red flags that they can't hear us or anything crazy like that. I'm sure that my ring doorbell is going to go off in the middle of this. It's about that time for... <laughs> Everyone's dog to work. But other than that, so May, I can't wait to see what you have for us. So what I've got today, um, so you can purchase. I know this is a question I get a lot because not everybody has the scan and cut machine that has the Disney files, the Disney scan and cut. Um, it is a lot of fun, and those files are special for that machine and really exciting. But I always get a lot of questions about if you can purchase Disney cut files if you can use them on other machines. That's a really common question. And the exciting news is, yes, you can get them from your brother dealer, and then you get an activation code, and you go on Canvas Workspace, which is, of course, the th free website that you can utilize from brother to do all kinds of fun stuff with your scan and cut, and activate them. And then you can either wirelessly transfer or you can put them onto a USB drive. And I feel like I'm like a janitor or something. I have all my, <laughs> well, but I keep them all. This is my organization tip. I have my embellishments one. I have my one that I only use for updates. Um, I have my SVG file one and I have my embroidery one that's just embroidery file. So I keep them all on the same ring so that if I'm looking for uh, either embroidery or cut files or that kind of thing, I know I just have to find this big old ring, which is very easy to find on my desk versus one of those little USB drives, which would be and difficult. And I also love that they're different colors. So you have them color coded by design or just that just happens to be? It ha um, I got like a, a pack of them and they were all different colors. And so I just went with it. And then I used a permanent marker just to write a couple letters on like embroidery has EMB on it and SVG files is SVG, scan and cut is SNC. So the scan and cut files, you can put them on a USB drive, which is nice because then, you know, they're on there. And if your internet is out or if you don't have your computer on or for whatever reason, but you want to use them on your machine, you can access them by inserting there. And if we go over to the machine, we can see when you go to retrieve point. data, it gives you all those great options. How do you want to get your data? Where is your data? And clicking the USB drive is going to pull up everything that I might have on this USB, which based on how long it's taking is a lot because <laughs> it's trying to wake up and load everything up there. Lots and lots of files to go. Let's see here. Usually it doesn't have take. a lot of files. Well, it usually doesn't take this long. I guess all those Disney files that I put on here really like, so there's some of them that like they're named like Mary and um, Flom, my last name or Cat Cozy. So there are projects that I've been doing that are on here. And I do recommend 
clearing them out now and again or organizing them now and again, I think it's a lot easier to find things and get a hold of things if they're better organized. Okay, now we're in the DS, the Disney files. And there's a very particular file that I was looking at here that I think would be a lot of fun. I think it's this one. Now you can kind of see how it's kind of small and you can't necessarily get a really good view of it. But you, when you click it, you can zoom in so you can see, you know, oh, okay, well, you know, this is the horse with Elsa one that I was thinking about, that I was thinking about. That is definitely the cut file. Hey, May, for some reason we can just barely, maybe we oh. can see it better now. Let's see if that's better. Let's see, maybe at an angle. That's better. It yeah. seems I think the light the light is kind of getting bright and dark, so it can't decide if it's gonna rain or be sunny today. So <laughs> that, that causes problems. But you can zoom in so that you can see. I don't know, it's hard to tell. Actually, but you go can back zoom down, in. Back down where you just were with about yeah, just a little bit. There we go. Mm -hmm. So you can see a little like you can see what it is before you commit to it. And if it's the one you want, you're just gonna push okay. And then now it's in there. And I always click on it once just to make sure that that red square shows the whole image. Only because if for some reason, if you ever have a cut file that has multiple pieces and you go to click it and you go to move it, you'll only move the selected piece. So I always try to make sure I'm looking at one whole item here. Okay, and then let's see here. I've got my big bin of a big, big bin of vinyl here, and I'm how to cut. There it is. Okay, so I've got some vinyl here, and this is heat transfer vinyl, and this is really good stuff for well, for basically anything, but it's really good stuff for all kinds of transferring projects. It's also going to really help as far as when you're trying to cut really fine detail. You really can't beat how smooth it is and how easy it is to cut with. It cuts the best finest detail. Okay, so there's that. So what I'm thinking for our first one here is I've got these little zipper pouches that I got at an after Christmas sale. I got a whole bunch of them, just plain zipper pouches. And I have some ideas for how I can decorate them and turn them into gifts. And what, so I'm thinking, cut files on these would be great. And then I can add like decorative hand stitching or like I can put little beads dangling from the zipper. I can do all kinds of fun stuff. But first, first, I know I always have to stop myself, but first, May, you need to get the <laughs> file cut. <laughs> you need so to get the file cut. What, uh, what mat are you using? I'm using a standard mat because that's the one that I currently have out and I'm out of low tech mats. Um, you can use a low tech mat with vinyl, generally speaking, because it's it sticks so well. That's the other thing is it's so smooth. It sticks so well to basically everything. Okay. So if we need to size this down a little, because it's six inches high right now, and that's probably a little too big. And here's your, you can see here on that, I can line my pouch up and count squares. One, two, three, four, five. So it's like oh, five yeah. and a half. So I can count my squares, which is kind of nice because it means that I can really see how big my item is without going and getting a ruler. We're just gonna click through okay, and then I'm gonna scan the mat because I wanna make sure that I've got this on top of my vinyl. And the vinyl goes down so that the transfer sheet or the shiny part, I always tell because the super shiny is the transfer sheet and you want that down, and then you want the side that you would iron to be up because you want to cut the iron, iron arm material. You don't want to cut, oh, okay. And then we can move it where we want to move it. And I'm gonna say, okay. And then I double check, one, two, five inches will be fine. And cut. And then half cut here is turn off. So we're just gonna go in and fix that. I love that you can turn half. So it's an auto blade. It automatically detects and cuts. But what I love about it is it's going to automatically detect and cut, but by putting half cut on, it'll cut the material, but not the underside. 
So not the transfer sheet. Which is very important. <laughs> it, it definitely is. And it goes pretty quick. I'm just I, looking through. I'm reading I, the comments. All I pulled all this vinyl out. I'm like, okay, you got a little over enthusiastic there, May. That's maybe a little too much vinyl. <laughs> we might be on here all day cutting out. <laughs> That's fine. I, I love to sit and cut stuff out. So I'm 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 happy to do so. And we've got a lot of options. We really have a lot of options as far as what we do with things. And the heat transfer vinyl, I always tell people, like in this case, I happen to get a really good deal on plain little zipper pouches that I could then decorate and turn into gifts. So that's what I'm doing this on. But we can do it on tote bags. We can do it on to pillowcases, onto aprons, onto clothing. I mean, you can do it onto whatever fabric surface you're wanting to heat transfer some vinyl. I'm going to have to start following you around when you go shopping because I'm still in love with those candles that you found that were on a huge oh, discount. I know. Oh, he's here somewhere. You know what? Where is he? I'll, in case anybody doesn't know what we're talking about. It was so cute. You go back and watch the video to learn how to do this. I, as forgot, well. I forgot to put him away, actually. I was just noticing when I was setting up today our little, little that was candle. That so cute. I just, it's so funny that you brought him up because I was cleaning up the table here and he was just kind of like lying down in a box and I'm like, well, why didn't you go, go away with all the rest? <laughs> <laughs> yes. You escaped. Hey, Lori wants to know, are you using the vinyl blade on this one, the new vinyl blade? So I don't yet have the vinyl blade. So I am using, so you can use the regular auto blade with vinyl. Um, and I know I have been for quite some time. Um, but there is a new vinyl blade out and it will be, I think it'll be very exciting to have, hopefully soon, hopefully soon. So now what I'm doing, I'm just checking. This is something I do, especially, let's see, how do we look? So I do a couple little checks on the vinyl and I'll explain it a little more in a moment. Okay, so I do a couple little checks. I do not move it off the mat because every once in a while, you know, you can buy lots of different heat transfer vinyls, lots of different brands, lots of different styles and finishes. Every once in a while, I come across one that's a little stubborn and doesn't want to train, doesn't want to cut very nicely. So I always quickly check if it cut nicely or not, because if it didn't, as long as I didn't touch the material on the mat, I can just quickly recut it. If for some reason the vinyl was being rude, I'll say it being rude because 99% of the time it's totally fantastic. Everything's great. And then there's that 1% of the time that some piece of vinyl doesn't want to cooperate. And when that happens. That's then, actually made. That usually only happens when we're live though. <laughs> I know it only happens when we're live. It only have, or when it's some like 10 minute vinyl and I only have the one piece of vinyl and, you know, yeah, on and on and on. That's when it happens for sure. <laughs> Definitely. Everybody's talking about their USB sticks, color coding. So someone said, I would hate to lose those. Well, first of all, before you have them on the USB stick, you'd save them to your computer. So if you did lose those, you'd still have them. Just an yes, extra all way. of them are saved. I have a file, I have several files on my computer that are for... USB. So I have an, an embroidery folder. I have an SVG folder. I have a scan and cut folder. Plus they're on Canvas Workspace. So yeah. even if your computer crashes, you have Canvas Workspace that you can access and get a hold of. I wasn't even thinking about that one. Yes, that's a no brainer. And so how many of you, by the way, I know a lot of you got scan and cuts over the holidays. I saw the posts. I saw Santa made a lot of visits. <laughs> so I just am curious how many of you have actually taken it out of the box. But don't forget about that Canvas workspace. That There is so much there. And we don't always show that here on the live shows because we're more showing you the tutorials, the tutorial side live. But be sure to go there and visit because there's so many things on there. Let me get another one cutting. I was just thinking because there's a couple more that I had the idea of cutting. So let me see. We're going to go back into our USB and hopefully it won't take very long there. And as I'm weeding this, just so you guys know, as I'm going around and weeding this, when I get to a certain point and I look, you know, and confirm, 
no, there's no, you know, there's not supposed to be any, you know, I'm not cutting a design. It's just, this is where it is. I'll trim off pieces of the vinyl so that it's easier to work with and easier to go through as I'm weeding out. It takes a while. In fact, this one maybe is going to take longer than I thought it would, but it takes a little while and it takes patience because you don't want to go and rip and tear anything because if you do, it's over and now you've wasted your vinyl and that's just not fun. Okay, so I know there are a little ways down here that they are. And there was a one that I saw. So there's lots of frozen ones. And then there's another one that's like the vintage Mickey Mouse. Oh, that I saw that one. That one's just very cool. So super cute. And I think this is them. Yeah, I think that's them. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that cool? That's very cool. You know what I did with that one? I actually had that sketched out with a pen. So I instead of cutting it, I used it as a pen and it made oh, a great uh, cool. on the top yeah, look of it. Mickey. Mickey and his flames and everything. That is just so, so much fun. But I had another one here. Let's see. There was another one. Where are you? Now look at that. That one's Olaf and it's got like the little leaves. A little Olaf in there. There's so many fun ones. I I have so many project ideas that I'm just gonna have to try to figure out. Oh, I like this one too. This one says changes in the air. Okay, so this is a good one to pick. So we'll do changes in the air. And we do have to edit this. This is a big thing. If you have text, well, first of all, let's make it a little bigger. Yeah, about like, I think about six inches wide will be good. So when you have text, you have to reverse it because if you don't reverse it, then you're actually cutting, it's going to cut and be backwards because the backside of the material is face up. But the lucky thing is all it takes is pushing that one button. That one button pushed and that's it. So then, I have to laugh about that maybe because the funny part of that is now with our cameras. So if you took a selfie, and you don't have the camera that switches it, you'll be fine. Or if you take a photo, just reverse your photo and then it'll turn up just fine. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Oh, it's, it's, so it's, 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 it's bad. <laughs> I always try to do it first thing, right when I think about it, just because otherwise I'm gonna forget. Otherwise I'm gonna totally forget and then I'm gonna cut it and then I'm gonna be mad because vinyl's not free. <laughs> so then I wasted some vinyl and then I'm gonna, yeah, it's, it's a whole, it's a whole irritating thing, I think, but you know, just do your best. Okay, so that's all there, that's all there. I'm gonna move that down just a tiny bit, and I know that that's okay. Okay, so we'll get this one cutting too. And, oh, and the half cut is on, so we're good to go. The weeding thing, I mean, it really is, I can't even express to you enough how much it is about patience and just being really patient with it. And that's why I'm cutting out another one because we'll see, this one may be, I may have overestimated my weeding abilities here in our time. This one might take that long to get because you really want to, you know, like if there's any spots where it's a little stuck that's why i like my brother pick tool that you can purchase because if there's any spots where it's like stuck a little that little that little tip is usually just enough to unstick it but you really want to just slide in here so carefully so carefully while you're doing that i'm reading a lot of people got the scan and cut some people oh, actually are pulling their box after a year that is kind of like a new scan and cut <laughs> That's so fun. Oh, Casey, you can't mess it up. Worst case, you mess up something and you won't mess up the machine, but you might mess up your paper or something. And just I might just mess up this design or I might mess up, you know, and tear the vinyl, which I would hate to do. But no, I won't mess up. I will be honest. I mean, obviously you always want to be very careful with your machine, but I will be honest that I accidentally, I was redoing things and the machine was this machine, exact machine actually, and it was brand new and I was in a hurry and I came running through and I tripped on the cord and the machine went flying across the room, slammed into the wall, I fell to the ground. And I'm just trying to figure out what I'm gonna call and say 
as to why I, I can't do my work because I broke my middle. I was so scared and I went, you know, and carefully went and checked and it was fine. It, 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 obviously it's years later and it's still running. <laughs> Totally fine, but okay. I, so nobody could screw up that bad. <laughs> yeah, and it still works. You should do that. That would be terrible. And I'm just over here checking to make sure everything. I kind of look at it in the light, you know, kind of shine the light on it, and make sure I see the cuts. But then I check in a couple places and make sure that everything is popping off nicely. So Tammy, yep. while you're doing that, Tammy just wants to know, how do you make the mat more sticky? Hers is not holding up well. Couple okay, for that so if it's me. not holding on well, then that means that there's probably debris on the mat. Um, and what I will do, like even after this show, just because my hands touch it a little bit, I'll take a baby wipe, not an alcohol wipe, but just a little wet wipe, and you just want to go. I It depends on what the mess is on here but I'll just go either circular motion or otherwise just towards the edge and get, like I can see little tiny felt and fabric fibers. I can see, you know, just little dust and such gets on it and that takes away the sticky. There you go. And that works every time. Well, most every time. Unless you well, it works really to a point. Method. I mean, there will be, there will get to a point where you've used it so much, you know, usually after, it uh, kind of depends, usually after a month or two, depending on, and I do a lot of, you know, I'm using this every week. I'm using it on multiple projects. Um, but it'll take a while. But then eventually, if it's not working anymore, then it's time for the new mat. Yeah. Nervous about So, Casey, there's uh, there should be, I believe, they all have a little starter project, right, Angela? Yep. They all have that little start with the starter project. And then I always tell people, start with the simple Start with the projects that, you know, you're looking at a project and it's nice and simple. Start I've there. I've one on my desk forever. This was the starter project for my, it was just a little paper. It cut out the paper, it did the drawing. Once you get going, you won't be worried at all. Very cute. And there are a ton of videos. I have May's website down below. I also have a blog .scan and cut. Down below, that's the Brothers Scan and Cut blog. There are so many tutorials that you could follow along on. So don't be afraid. <laughs> Actually, maybe when they first came out, we had a lot more mistakes. At least I did. I had a little mat issue. But uh, not anymore, not with the auto blade. It is definitely. It's a lot easier to follow along. Okay. Oh, uh, somebody else got to do Scan and Cut. Nice. Oh, Marianne, her son gave her one for her birthday. Nice. Oh, nice. That's very, he's definitely a keeper. <laughs> no kidding. That's great. Okay, I'm going to switch ones just because this one I know is going to be faster. But... <laughs> this one's much simpler, so I know it's going to be faster for you guys. I under I overestimated my speed in... And that happens, but you guys know that's the rule though, is no being in a rush, not with your vinyl. That's like the number one rule I have. If you're in a rush, don't do your vinyl at that time because it just won't go well for you. So uh, you might notice I'm a little bit, like I pull a little harder or I go ahead and let it tear. That only happens when I absolutely know that I'm going like right there, I snapped it because there's no other, cut file, there's no, you know, I'm not gonna harm anything if I do that. So I don't do that just at random. So Sandra has a good question and, and uh, you kind of addressed this already, cleaning, keep your mat clean. She said that she's cutting the vinyl and halfway through, uh, she even has it taped down, but halfway through it wrinkles and then goes sideways. That means your mat is not sticky enough. So you, you need to make sure your mat is clean, definitely. If, and it, honestly, the vinyl is the easiest to stick. So if that's happening, it's it's I it's probably definitely that the mat. Yeah, like Angela said, that the mat is not sticky enough. Um, but it could also be you do need to make sure. I don't know if you noticed, but when I put my vinyl down on this, if I put this sticker vinyl here and I don't actually, 
you see how it's lifting up right there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can't just set it there and go. You're going to need to get in there with, um, I'm just using a little spatula tool because that's what's right here. But you need to get in here with something and press it down. You need to not just set it on the mat and expect it to stay because you have to make sure that it's sticking. But also with the vinyl, let's see if I can get the blue one to do it. And that was, so, you know, okay, that vinyl, was you see how there's, well, that's exaggerated, but it happens a lot with the vinyl where if it's not pushed all the way down, there's a wrinkled spot. And then if you come through, it'll lift things up. So that's the other reason you need to really press down and make sure it's really on there and on there flat. So I'm just going to add, if you didn't pick up one tip today, that was it. How she puts it on the mat. And I see Sandra asking, oh, where can you get new mats and supplies for the scan and cut? Call your local brother dealer, number one. They have all of the new things they can ship to you. So you might want to check that first. And also, uh, they have the really long mats. They have the new fabric mat, depending on what... Um, scan and cut you have. It's only for a few different models, but uh, they have a lot of new things. And when the new things do come out, if you follow their page or get their emails, you'll know before actually probably the same time we do. <laughs> or sooner. Or sooner. Yeah, or sooner. So you can see this is coming right along. Well, that looks good. And I have another one. We're going to do another one that we draw too, because I have a, I have a, concept for a drawing one. So I've done a couple of these. We've talked a little bit about how there's the drawing tools and um, just the drawing tools allows you to, like you were saying, Angel, you were drawing it on there or not, not cutting, you can draw. By using those tools, you can do, ooh, okay, it's time to get rid of this. See, when you get like this, it's difficult to see what the heck you're doing and, and it starts to get stuck. So you don't want to do that. You just want to yeah, and you can see how useful this pick tool. I can't overestimate how much help that pick tool is because it just really helps you get in there. My fingers aren't as tiny as that little pick. So it really helps me get in those little areas and not tear anything, just gently fix up whatever needs to be. So while away. you're while you're doing that, I see a few more good questions that I'll just bring up like because you could do it sure. later. Talk while you're. <laughs> um, so, I well, the, let's see. I just lost the one. Hold on one second. She wanted to know her paper was not sticking to the mat. So this is, or no, her paper was sticking too much to the mat. So you have the reverse thing. There are okay, different so of mats. The, that is the that is very true. When the I always tell people, you probably. I mean, if you're going to be cutting on more than let's say just vinyl or just one material. If you're going to cut on multiple materials, oh, and this is the part where we go through and just make sure if there's any tiny little pieces that are meant to be like in the middle of a letter and picked out. Um, if you are doing any kind of cutting on more than one material, you're probably going to need more than one active mat. And that is just so, for example, you know, I'm cutting all this vinyl and it really, the vinyl, because it's half cut, and because it's so smooth and there's no fibers, it really doesn't do any wear and tear at all on this mat. I can probably, if I just use vinyl on this mat, cut for months and be totally fine because there's no, you know, there's no fiber, there's no material being transferred. The mat's going to say super sticky, but I jump around with a lot of different materials. So what'll happen though is, something like vinyl because it's the shiny um, smooth plastic it doesn't stick to the mat ever something like paper or something with more that can stick a brand new super sticky mat is going to be so sticky that you're probably going to end up sticking to it and oh, when it's brand new it's so sticky that it actually you can stick to it and so that's why i say multiple mats so a mat like this one, by the time we're done today, and then I'll clean it, you can see it. Uh, well, maybe you can't see, but it's got some little fibers on it from yesterday's project. Once I clean this, this mat will be in perfect condition for paper because it's been used just enough that it's not 100% sticky. 
That is why I usually have a low tack mat on hand because the low tack mat when brand new is absolutely perfect for paper. So either having one of those on hand or having a little older mat, a regular mat, one of those two things is going to help you make sure that you don't um, stick paper. But no, a brand new regular mat plus paper equals stuck. That's just all that's just going to be. Okay, so the last thing I do before I go to iron this, I'm just going to double check everybody that everybody looks good. And it does. And just so you guys know, and I'll be sure to post pictures when I'm done. But my intention is I want to do some, like, hand embroidery around it and add some, like, little beads and things. I think that'll be so pretty. And I love that this is a frozen design, but it doesn't necessarily look, necess you know, it doesn't have to be, like, going to a frozen fan. I can send this to whoever. Yeah, that looks great. And I see a lot of questions rolling in that we've already answered. So just so you guys know that you can go back and watch the replay. Uh, from the beginning as soon as we're finished. So how to clean the mat and things like that. We've already covered all that. So you'll want to watch the replay on that. But that transfer paper somebody just asked about. And I that I think they were asking, is that transfer paper? And yes, it is. So but it's already, right. when you're using heat transfer vinyl, the transfer material is built in. Meaning the vinyl is being held onto a one-time use transfer sheet versus when you do a sticker, Obviously, the back side of the sticker vinyl is a sticker. So the top side and the top side is, you know, the finished surface. So when you're doing sticker, you actually have to get out. This is transfer material for sticker vinyl. So you actually have to get it out with, with the heat transfer vinyl. It's already there. And that's really nice because if you look, if I move this around, it stays stuck. It's sticky enough that it holds down there, which is important because then when we put material over, and then we're going to press with the iron. Let's see. Okay, good. The steam is off. And then we're, when we press with the iron, it keeps everything in there. So I don't have to worry about everything moving all around because it's got that beautiful transfer material that holds it nice and firm. And then we'll lift up and I'll check. And it's not ready yet. We need to do more pressing and that's fine. But I always just kind of take after, I don't know, 15 or 20 seconds, I always do a check. And I use whatever fabric happens to be on hand. This one happens to be on hand because I have some fun, like, Mardi Gras fabrics up next. And I'm not sure what I'm doing with them yet, but that's what, <laughs> that's why this fabric got picked today, because it happens to be next in the pile. Okay. Not quite, but it's getting there. It just, and, you know, you can use a heat press or an iron or whatever, Whatever works best, whatever you've got that you can work with will work there. And it's just, I like that it's a lot of fun because it gives me like things like this. Yes, I could create and make and do things into my scrapbook or things for myself. But I love when these cut files, when I can do something for someone else as well. That's always a bonus. Okay, it looks like we're there. Just what uh, what temperature do you have your iron on there? What's that? What attempt do you have your iron on? I just have, I just always put it all the way up because I just do. Now, you do want to keep the material over, but I will tell you from experience, when I'm working on like this kind of material, um, like canvas tote bag type material, a lot of times like one or two, Not I'm not sitting on here for a long time, but sometimes like a good press through directly so that I can see like that I'm pressing the leaf and pressing the letters. Um, once I've got it there, if it's still being a little stubborn, sometimes one pass through directly really helps make the difference. And actually I can already see rather than, I don't want to keep pressing and pressing to the point that I start to have burnt vinyl. Um, and then I'll, and then I lift ever so slowly Yep. And I think it's just because this has kind of a deeper texture and you really do have to get the vinyl in down in there. Oh my gosh, that looks awesome. And that was so, so easy. Isn't that fun? That's really fun. 
So next steps on this one is going to be, because it's just, you know, it's just simple and plain, my next steps are going to be to add decorative hand embroidery stitches, to add little beads, to add something hanging off of my little zipper. So I can really customize this now, but the hard part, obviously, all the detailed design is all done and easy from the scan and cut. And we're not abandoning our horse. That one's just going to, I'm looking at that and I'm like, okay, that's like a 20 minute <laughs> weed job. I did not realize that was going to be <laughs> such an intense weed job. So we're just going to cut. Well, I will circle back and share that. I'll share it on Facebook and Instagram once I've got it, once I've got it all cut or weeded, I should say. Yeah, but that's awesome. I wanted to show you guys the drawing because this is another thing that I'm working on and I think is a lot of fun. And we've only done this once before and everybody just loved seeing it. And I had a couple of requests that they couldn't find that episode when we did it. So we'll do it again. So this is actually normally for my sewing machine for when I'm doing machine embroidery but it works just as well if we're talking about hand stitching and embroidery. So this is just a piece of cream fabric and I've learned my lesson. I'm gonna iron it before. I used to try to, you know, cut the corner and not iron. <laughs> that never goes well. That is always a terrible idea. Let's see. I gotta, oh, that's why I got to put my steam back on here and just get all the wrinkles out. Well, most of the wrinkles out. You're actually probably going to wrinkle it up a little bit if you're sitting here hand embroidering it. But I try to get at least most of the wrinkles out before we start. And that'll be good enough. And then this is kind of a medium to heavy duty stabilizer that you would put on fabric. Normally where you would use this would be, I'm putting this on my fabric and I'm going to put it in my sewing machine and I'm making an embroidery project. But you can use this for hand embroidery as well. There's no, and it works really well. Um, especially when I don't always like working in an embroidery hoop. Sometimes I like to stitch in a hoop, but sometimes I just want the piece of fabric and this is firm enough that I can just hold the fabric if I really want to and stitch which is always nice. And that's not iron on, by the way, that's just sticky. That's just sticky, we just stick it on and go. And the reason I do it first is it's just going to make my life easier when we then go to the scan and cut. And we were talking about a really firm press that definitely goes for fabric too when you're using the scan and cut. If it's not firmly pressed on there, then it can come off, right? If it's not firmly adhered, and the only thing I'm going to do here is this is a, and I'll explain this in a second. I'm just going to put a little mark here and a little mark here, which is not a big deal because it'll wash out. This is a washable. This is a pencil specifically for fabric. So it's a pencil that you can draw onto the fabric. And then when you wash it off, it disappears. And the tool I have it in here, this is a universal pen holder that's available for purchase from your brother dealers. And what I've done here, this pencil is not thick enough to work. So what I've done is wrapped some washi tape around just thick enough so that now I actually can get it to stick in here. And what you do is you put it in see here put it in and then you're going to want to get it so that the tip is touching right here and then this play is going to make it tighter so that it is going to hold firm and just like that we are ready to draw with the scan and cut that's a great tip with wrapping around that pencil because if it is too small or pen that's a you know really what's funny is the last time I used this was actually months and months ago here on the show and I lost it and I could not find the darn thing and I just yesterday it fell out of a drawer and I went, oh, <laughs> I'm doing my deep cleaning and it fell out of a drawer. I'm going, well, there we go. That's exactly 
what I was looking for. Perfect. I've been for that forever. So we're going to pop the blade out. There you go. Pop the blade out, and then this just goes right where the blade goes. I mean, it's so, so easy. And I love that. I love when a project is super easy. Okay. I'm gonna have to clear the. I'm gonna have to clear this USB out though, because it takes so long to load right now, which is exciting. I'm glad it has so many files on it. <laughs> okay. And then I think there are lots of files. There we go. Okay. Is it that one? Okay. So check this one out. That's Mickey Mouse, and it says laugh. At yourself, well, let's see, let's zoom even more. It says, laugh at yourself. To laugh at yourself is to love yourself. But it's Mickey's head there. I cut that one. I love that one. I put it on a cup. It's so cute. It's really cute. So I'm going to draw that one. And so I'm going to say, okay. And then I'm going to go into edit. And there's the little tiny thing. What is the little tiny Oh, it's a little tiny, um, what is it? Little tiny heart. Oh, cute. Okay. So I'm going to pick that one and I'm going to make it bigger because I do not want to stitch too tiny. That would not be much fun at all. So I'm going to make it about six inches wide. I think I'm going to center it down here and then I'm going to get rid of the heart. The way I can get rid of the heart is just going, whoops, I passed it right there. Blow garbage can. Okay. And then I'm going to scan this just to see. And you remember I put the two little marks as to where the top left and bottom right of not the fabric, but of the stabilizer because I want to make sure I'm going in the middle of the stabilizer. I love that scan function. So I can see it right there and I can see it right here. So it looks like I should move over a little bit. Yeah, that ought to be good. And then instead of cut, we just push draw and start. And I'll move this down a little so you can see. And you can kind of keep an eye on it. It should be big enough and it should go through really nicely, but if for any reason it's not, you can always hit the pause button and adjust. Like if my pencil gets too dull and isn't really reaching anymore, you know, because we've used a lot of pencil there. Like I think, nope, it looks pretty good. Pause, it's getting a little pale. So what I will do, I can pop this out. And just double check, well, if I, there it is. I was going to say, where's my thing? So it got a little pale, and I can see it's not touching anymore. So the, we've just used up a bit of the pencil, which makes sense. We're drawing. So I'll just put it back in and continue with, by pushing start. And it'll just keep going. And then if I see that happen again, where it looks like it's getting a little light. Oh no, that looks good. I can go back in and do it again. I can also redraw it if, I, if I'm having an issue or if I'm trying to use it like this. We're using a pencil so it is naturally a little lighter. but I can see it going and it's looking good. That looks great. Okay, but if it does it again, again, we can just keep checking if I'm like, well, it's looking a little light and it's not touching the bottom anymore. So we need to adjust it a little, there we go. I love how easy it is though. You just keep pushing, you know, if you need to pause it because it's getting too light, you can just push start. So while you're doing that, I saw a couple of people say you can actually put stabilizer in there. Oh yeah, 
no problem. Oh yeah, definitely. Stabilize, I, there's a lot of stuff like felt, I usually cut with stabilizer because it just keeps the felt nicer anyway. A lot of the wool felts I use are so prone to stretching and, and getting bent out of shape that if I have the stabilizer on there, it just helps them stay really nice. Yes, and a good place to buy your vinyl Again, call your brother dealer. They have a ton of vinyl, and I believe the new cork is out, which is fantastic. Yes, your scan and cut can cut cork, so and it can cut fabric. I just saw someone ask, what can your scan and cut cut? A lot. <laughs> it is. It's. I, I mean, I've done sample stocks before. Okay. So it came out really good, but, and I'm not going to take it off the mat. But there are some areas where I like, I actually want it fairly light, but there are some areas that are a little too light. So we don't have to worry about it though. The key is just don't take it off your mat. That really is the key. If it's a little light, okay, so I'll show you what you do. If, it, if it's a little light or you're not happy, and this goes for cutting and for drawing. If it's a little light or you're not happy with it or you just think, you know what, I think that should be better, or I think that should be different. Um, all you're going to do, I'm just double checking that everything is where it should be and it actually is. All you're gonna do is go back in and let it do it again, and you're just gonna keep an eye on it. And I know some say, well, you know, that's a lot of effort, is there a better way? Well, there is, except if you were doing this with a pen or something that's going to be permanent, then your concern would be that, guess what? You know, it's now permanently there and it's not going to be invisible and it's not going to be pretty when you're a finished project. So I always tell people, like, don't go ahead and let it do its, you know, go ahead and let it do its thing and be okay with, you know, if you need to do it a second time for a delicate material, you know, right. or something like the pencil where, you know, like, I'll pause it. And the pause is so easy to just pause and double check that, oh, you know what, it's it's come up just a little bit, let's fix that. And it doesn't take anything just other than just pushing pause and then pushing start. So this is a fun one I'll show you because I had, this is a drawing one that I did. So I drew out the horse and then I hand stitched all around where the lines were and then washed it off to get all of the pencil, like what we're talking about here off and then I went through and I took art fibers and I sewed art fibers like a mane for the horse and beads and stuff all crazy and oh my gosh, that is so cute this is one of my favorite and it's so funny because I made it for a gift and then I didn't give it away I made her a different one because I like <laughs> this one so much that I just could not let it go so I had to make a second one because I liked it too much and I had to keep it. Isn't that fun? There's so much stuff we can do with all of this. Like here is, so this is gonna be coming to, this is a sneak peek of sorts. This is going to be coming to the um, Scan and Cut blog soon. And this one is, there's it's, it's my no embroidery embroidery hoop because this is a pocket. So I'm gonna be putting like little tags and gifts and things for my friend into here. That's and then she can take those out and it can display. And you can see I've got my little vinyl, like we were doing earlier, all my little vinyl pieces on here. So much fun. So many fun things we can make. Oh my gosh, there's so many fun things. Speaking of gifts, someone just mentioned on here that they used this one that came with their scan and cut. Because I mentioned that I put chocolates in them and I keep making more of these. I just leave this one on my desk because it's so cute. She put chocolates in it, left it in the mail for her mailman and got even got a thank you note. What a great idea. That is fantastic. <laughs> and you know what? And there are. And if, and if you actually, I was just looking that on Canvas Workspace for free, there's some cute Valentine ones. That you can make little Valentine boxes. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, I need to make some Valentine boxes because that would just be the most fun. That is a great idea. Everybody's saying they love it. They love it. And yes, somebody just asked, by the way, because they're watching with the stabilizer there, if you can use a seam or heat bond, heat bond is usually what I use, and cut it on the scan and cut. Yes, you can. Oh, yeah. Yep. And the only thing I will say, some of that, so is I had somebody who was having a problem with it sticking too much. Leave the paper 
Like if it's one where you iron it on and it has a paper backing, leave the paper backing on. Don't oh, yeah. that on. Leave it on, leave it alone. Don't try to put the super sticky on the super sticky. Then it doesn't go well. No, that that does not end up well. <laughs> well, that's what we figured out. We were working through like what's going on because I use it all the time and it's great. And that's what we finally figured out is she was putting the super sticky on the super sticky. <laughs> this is the SDX 225. Um, but the great thing about the DX machines, I always tell everybody, whatever model you have, they all operate the same. So how you step through it and how you would create would be the same process, which is so nice. So we can all share ideas together. Yes, that's awesome. Everybody's saying so cute. Uh, what stabilizer did you, well, oh, do you use sticky back stabilizer on felt? I think someone asked if you'd mentioned that. Isn't that what you said? It depends on what I'm making. If I'm doing something like sometimes I'll make little stitched embellishments that I put into my scrapbook then I would use sticky back because I just want something really firm. Um, but if I'm going to be sewing like this guy, when I went and cut out the horse out of felt, I used an iron on. And so one that was designed to then get iron pressed fabric to fabric. And basically, I mean, it's so soft, you would never know there was stabilizer in there now. Makes sense. All right, let's see, let's see if we can see your Oh, you know what? I, the lighting in here is so funky. It is. I can see, clearly see it, but I can't. I don't oh, we can see it. see it. I can totally clearly see it, though, and I'm super excited because I'm going to stitch this all up. I'm going to stitch this all up, and it's going to be so darn cute. It really, That's really cute. It's going to be so cute. So my, plan, my plan is I'm going to stitch. Um, I'm going to solid stitch all the way around the letters. And then I don't know what I'm going to fill in with. I haven't decided color wise. I just knew when I saw that, I'm like, I got to stitch like all the way around the letters. And then I was thinking about, um, you can get pretty wild with layering. So you could draw it in this shape, but you could also cut it at the same size out of a different material, like out of a heat transfer vinyl and then adhere certain pieces in. So like parts of the pattern in, you can get pretty wild if you want to get intricate and wild with this stuff it can be yes. a lot of fun or you can keep it super super simple what I, that's one of my favorite things too is that we can keep it really simple and just really get stuff done like you were saying like you're organizing i know mine well i'm gonna have to go up and reorganize this right away because it's gotten <laughs> more well i what i did was i just pulled out and i've got my um my label here from my p-touch that says htv so in theory, this is just supposed to have plain heat transfer vinyl. And I keep all different sizes in here. Um, I don't get rid of, you know, like here's a very funky piece. Because you, with the scan and cut, we can use, you know, a little funky little piece here to make snowflakes or stars or, I mean, whatever design we want to make out of whatever size we want. So I keep every single piece. But this is the HTV drawer. The glitter has its own separate drawer. And then the sticker vinyl. So this vinyl that you're not heat transferring, that has a separate drawer. I just went and threw a whole bunch of types in here to come on down because I was all excited to start making with these new <laughs> files. I got all excited when I realized I only just got them yesterday. So I got all excited when I realized I could get, get to creating with them today with you guys. That's awesome. So just a couple more questions for, oh, uh, I let you go, or we go, uh, June wants to know so you can you must have missed the beginning june but you can go back and watch it but just one more recap on how yeah um, so the designs that i use today are designs that you can purchase through your brother dealer and then you get access via canvas workspace so you unlock them and actually if you go on canvas workspace you can see all of the options that are available that you don't have access to so you can figure out what it is that you want or what it is that which set appeals to you and then you uh, it you get an activation code and it activates them and then you can use them from there on whichever machine you have registered whatever machine so yes there are files they're not the same they're different files but there's lots of different fun disney file options for everybody and that's a good thing i think that some people forget about i remember when the lace collection came out that was a special collection you could purchase so you can add it as you go i mean if you have an older scan and cut and some of these new things come out check your brother dealer because you can purchase it that's right just to add on, like buying software for your computer. <laughs> Everybody's saying super, super cute. May, that's really cute. So be sure. Now, May, you have some new videos up on your YouTube channel too, I believe. 
I do. So every single week I have different, I have new videos going up on my YouTube channel. And then I always put a link um, at my craft with me at my Instagram and also my Facebook page. I always put a link to those whenever there's new ones up um, as well as a lot of times there'll be projects. Like when we finish sewing this, if it's not a YouTube video, then it gets posted to my Instagram. So it gets, it gets shared and it gets posted um, as well. So I'm, yeah, every single week I'm crafting and crafting and sharing. And when this guy is done, hopefully, oh my goodness, it better be done before we meet up next month. And as long <laughs> as it is, then I always, I try to do that too, where on our next live show, I try to bring anything in. If I can remember or find it, I try to bring yeah. it in and show what we made or what got finished and all of that good stuff. It's amazing what our sewing and crafting rooms can happen in one month. So just so everybody knows, this uh, starting in 2021, we're kind of streamlining these live shows a little bit so you can remember. I know we have a lot of different brand ambassadors, brother educators on Thursdays, and I know you have some of your favorites. So May will be coming on, is it the second Tuesday of every month or third? Second. Did I lose May? Oh, I'm right here. So May, is it the second Tuesday of every month that you're popping in? Oh, I don't know. This is the first time hearing about it. <laughs> I think so. I've saved the date so you would know like exactly like when she's popping in. So it could change, of course. But we're trying to see because I know Cindy does crafting as well. She's coming in on the third Tuesday. So just if you watch the calendar, you'll kind of see a pattern. So each one always pops in every month. And um, so just you don't miss it because sometimes a lot of times may the week after you're on. They're like, where's May? <laughs> I said, she'll be back soon. But don't forget her blog or her website's right below here too. And the brother, um, the blog dot scan and cut is down below too. And that's where you can see a lot of her projects and other ambassador projects too. So one somebody says one month, one day. That's what our sewing, my sewing room looks like. I'm still cleaning from after being gone for the holidays. May, I don't know what happened in here before I left, but I must have been working on a lot of projects. <laughs> Or the gremlins came in and uh, had a lot of fun in here on the machines. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of both. <laughs> a little bit of both. Yes, definitely. So I'm um, just making sure. So Lola, um, if you go back and watch from the beginning, you'll be able to watch the whole show over when we're finished being live here. So it's either save it to your, it looks like you're on Facebook. So save it to your Facebook page and you can watch the entire replay one more time. As many times as you like, actually. And... You can find May's Instagram and YouTube channel if you click down there on her website. So, right, May? Yep, I've got everything all linked up. Perfect. And I'm making sure I'm not missing any other thing. What does Jen say? Do you always post the dates on the brother page? So, actually, Jen, the dates are on the Facebook page. If you look at the events, it always tells you Tuesdays and Thursdays at noon on the brother page. Just mark your calendar. Tuesdays are brand ambassadors. Thursdays are educators. Yes, and I try to put in who's coming on as well, so then you'll know. All right, sounds good. I think we got everyone. Everyone's saying that was super, super cute. Thank you so much, Darlene. I'm glad you stuck around because she said, I don't have scan and cut. I don't know if I want it, but um, every time I watch it, it's a little more enticing. <laughs> so, May, I hope you have a wonderful day. It's been a lot of fun with you on here. Oh, thank you. I can't wait to see you guys next time. I cannot wait. I'm going to be stalking your Instagram until that Mickey's done. Oh, it will. Yeah, that's going to go right to the top of the list because I've got my vision for it now. So now it's got to go to the top of the list and get going right away. I just saw somebody in there said, well, can't you use a fabric erasing pen? Yes. And it, you can actually some of those come with the scan and cut. The only issue with one of those, one of those is wash away and one of those disappears in 24 hours. So if you're going, I think it's the purple one that disappears in 24 hours. Have you used that one yet, May? Because I did that and I made I a mistake haven't. waiting longer than 24 hours. I usually take, I mean, if it's so, if it's hand sewing stuff, it's usually longer than 24 hours. So I try not to, <laughs> I don't want to get confused. Yeah, because I did that and it didn't work out well either. <laughs> it was half of a design was finished. It wasn't even embroidery. I was sewing a project. So everyone's saying thank you. Thank you. And uh, definitely. So next month we have um, February. So I can, I wonder if you'll share some of those Valentine's things that you're going to be working on. Yes, actually, that is the plan. That sounds awesome. All right. Looking forward to seeing you. Everyone have a great day. 
and see you. Let's see for the brother page, by the way, uh, Cindy Hogan will be on this afternoon at 4.30 p.m. Tomorrow, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on my page. And you have Emily tomorrow at 3 and then Thursday at noon with the brother educators. Fill your whole week with some creativity, right? Everybody's saying thanks, thanks. Wonderful to see you and May, great to see you.